Happy New Year, Dandelions! We are back again. Bit of a wait between videos, but it has been the season. I've had a lot of things going on at work, get that big push before Christmas. Then it's the holidays, kind of wanted to spend that chilling. So here we are, New Year, new video. What are we talking about? Dependent visas. Seeing it a lot on social media lately. A lot of people asking about bringing their partners, bringing their kids, blah, blah, blah. So I'm just going to give you a bit of an overview about your dependent visa. You know, can I bring them from day one? Who are dependents? Can I bring so-and-so? What do I need to do? These are the basic things, just to give you a bit of information. Of course, if you do enjoy these things, drop a comment, tell us that you're enjoying it, join the Facebook group, just something to show us that, you know, we're doing a good job, essentially. We're happy to help you. But let's start. Anyway, I've dragged this on. So, who is a dependent? Who actually is eligible for a dependent visa? Now, I've split this into the partner side and the dependent side. Because, of course, spouse and partner visas are still classed as a dependent visa. So, partners, of course, your married partner that can be a civil partnership or a marriage the UK does not discriminate as long as it was a legal you know legal ceremony fiance so you've got the little ring on it I haven't um, and you want to bring your you know bring your fiance here you can however the requirement for that is once they get to the UK you will be expected to get married within that first six months you have to be able to prove that, God knows how. But yeah, that's the condition for a fiancé visa. Also, a long-term partner, basically living with you, so you're living together, without the marriage part. So you're a long-term partner for over two years. You have to have been together for over two years. And you have to both be over 18. So if you come over here, at 18 and your partner's 17, uh uh. If you come over here at, you know, 18 and your partner's 18, bing bing, as long as you've been together for two years, and you're gonna need to prove that. But that's partners. Dependent wise, you've got any child that's yours under 18. This includes children that are born here or you are here. So if you come over as a, you know, a tier two worker, you give birth, that child goes under a dependent visa. Um, other than that, it's anyone else. They can be adult, but they must require full-time care from you. So it could be someone with a, you know, a, a cognitive debilitation, a medical debilitation, mental debilitation, but this one's tough because you need to basically prove that you're the only one that can look after them and there's no other method for them to be cared for back at home. Really tricky because of course there's quite a few care services around in a lot of countries so yeah good luck with that. So who are not classes dependents? This is usually where the major you know confusion lies because you usually get you know can I bring my parents? No, because they're over 18, I'd hope, and unless they need that full-time care and you can prove it, they can only come as a tourist visa. Um, if you've been in a relationship with your partner for less than two years, even if you've been living together, nope, not eligible. It must be at least two years. Again, as I've said, if you're in a relationship with someone under 18, no, so keep that in mind. And then any other family member that's over 18 you can't bring the only exception to this rule there's always exceptions of course is if you have a child that's now over 18 but they were already on a dependent visa so it could be you're renewing your visa for example and when you originally brought them over they were 16 and now they're 18 they are still fine because they were already here on a dependent visa, if you get me. So it's almost like you're renewing theirs as well. That's 
And that's the essentials about who, who can be a dependent. Let's get on to the money part. The other horrible, horrible, horrible part. But, gotta talk about it. So, in terms of the dependent visa, there is what they call a financial requirement. What this is, is you need to prove you earn this much money per year in savings or salary or anything else with proof to enable yourself to bring these dependents over. Now, this is a little bit mathematical and it's a little bit expensive, but I'm gonna run through it. So to bring you know, your main dependent over, your partner, your spouse, you need to prove that you are earning at least £18,600, that has to be pounds, per year. So, then when it comes to children, it's a lot more expensive. So on top of that 18600 for your first child, that's an extra 3800 so suddenly you've gone up to £22,400 requirement for the year. For every other child after that, it's an extra £2,400. So, just as an example, if you bring your partner over and three kids, that's £18,600 plus the £3,800 for the first child, plus £2,400 for the second child, and then another £2,400 for the third child, that's a total of 27200 providing my math is right. That's quite a hefty financial requirement for you to be able to prove. Especially, I mean, as a nurse, you're generally looking at that anyway. But of course, if you're not a nurse, you come over as a carer, you're not even close to meeting that requirement. So bear that in mind. That's the horrible money out of the way. Now let's go for the most commonly asked question. And then I've got a second question afterwards, which I forgot to mention at the beginning. Um, I'm coming here, say, February 1st. Can I bring my family from day one? Not really. Um, there's been occasions, rare occasions, where this has managed to be worked around. The general consensus is no, for the following reasons. Um, most care agencies and most employers and such will want you to have been here for at least six months, that's their advice usually, because you're going to need to have proof of your address in the UK, so you're going to want you know, bank statements, uh, utility bills, stuff like that, which of course you can't get if you're not here. Um, you're going to need to be able to prove you know, that you have your right to live in the UK, of course, if you're not coming to the UK yet, you're not likely to have that yet, or if you do, it's, you know, brand new. So, and of course, you know, if you've got your visa to come here and you're coming on February from now, there's no way you're going to get the processing done for your family before February 1st. It's not going to happen. It takes a good, you know, a good couple of months, just like every other visa. Um, of course, you're going to need to be able to prove that you're meeting this financial threshold. The usual way to do that, the best way, is with six months of pay slips, because then you can use that to calculate your, you know, your average uh, annual income, or you'll just get told, you know, your if you're in the NHS, you're band five. This is your, you know, this is your annual income, so you can do it that way. But of course, you're never gonna get, well, you're very unlikely to get all of that proof before you're here. It's very unlikely. Um, that's why they advise six months, usually. Of course, a lot of places will, well, especially for nurses, may give you that extra support to bring them over, but it won't be financial. They may have paid for you to come over as a nurse, but they're not going to pay for your family. They will maybe give you some, you know, some help with the documents or help with what you need, but that's probably about as far as you're going to get. The other question that was asked to me before I go from uh, one of my one of our lovely uh, special guests before, Mr. Junie Tor, from way back when, when we were talking about IELTS. Um, does it matter if you're civil partnership with same sex or gender fluid or you know all of the LGBTQ plus uh, you know relationships 
with, within that. Uh, no, the UK does not discriminate. We are much, you know, much a gender equal uh, country as best we can. We have a massive LGBTQ plus community and lots of projects being done to ensure this equality is improved, maintained, you name it. So if you're in a civil partnership with, you know, two men, two women, gender fluid, non-binaries, trans, whatever, and that counts for long-term relationships as well, it's fine. You can, you know, you can come here. Of course, it's, you know, you're going to have to prove that you're in the partnership. You, you know, I'm sure, same as any other relationship, to be honest. But, I hope that helps. Um, as I say, I'm sorry the room's a bit dark. I am actually doing this at nearly midday. Um, yeah, this is about midday in the UK today, and it's looking quite grim. But anyway, I hope you like this. Feel free to ask me any questions. I will always answer them as best I can. Do drop a comment, even if it's to say well done, because comments help us. The more comments we get, the more the videos get shown uh, you know, to other YouTubers, and the more people can actually find us and find the support some of them actually want, but just miss. Um, other than that, join the Facebook group, drop me a message on Facebook, always happy to answer when I can, and uh, I'll see you in the next video, which... Uh, it's probably going to be a very quick update about the NMC, but it might come before this. So if it comes before this, ignore this. If it comes after this, be ready. Uh, see you later, dandies. I'll talk to you in the next episode. And... Why didn't you stop?